Hey everybody, so I wanted to create a video about this semester's group project for our class so that everyone's on the same page. So this project will basically have you in a group of four to five students uh, do a presentation on a topic related to the class, uh, but something that's not covered in our textbook or our lectures. Now you can pick any topic that you like, and for this uh, project, we're gonna be having you read original articles, uh, research articles on that topic. That might seem a little intimidating, but actually the way articles are written in psychology is pretty straightforward and easy for anyone to pick up and understand regardless of whether they have a degree in psychology or not. So uh, feel free to really pick any topic that's related with the class in general. So you can make your topic as broad or as specific as you like, as long as you have one central topic. Now, when it comes to deciding what that topic is gonna be, I want you all to collaborate within your group to basically discuss different things that you're interested in the class and to come up with something that hopefully interests everyone. Now to find out what group you're in, at the top of the group project instructions document, click on where it says project teams. If you click on this, it has a list of everyone in the class uh, next to what team they've been assigned to. So these first four people are part of team one. And let's say if you're in team 17, you find your name somewhere here, then you'd be in team 17. And at that point, you can then find the emails for all of your other team members. So I suggest as early as possible in the week, emailing everyone, uh, getting a group thread going. And then it's great if you could share maybe what your phone number is so that you could text back and forth as well. I know people often collaborate better over text or maybe social media than they do over email. But however you guys wanna communicate, that's how you can start. So like I said, the beginning of the week uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, make sure that you've talked with your group members and that you've all figured out one topic that interests everyone. And then mostly what you're going to be doing this week is finding an article about that topic and then summarizing it. And so to find an article, we're all going to use PsycInfo in the class. PsycInfo is much better than like Google or Wikipedia because it gets us uh, just peer-reviewed articles within the field of psychology. And PsycInfo is available to all students. If you click on the link right here, it'll take you to the library listing for the database PsycInfo. Now, importantly, you notice it gave me an off-campus access warning. So if you're off-campus, uh, meaning you're logging onto the internet, maybe somewhere far away from UC Merced, then you have to log in with a special program. And if you follow, if you click on this little link and follow the instructions, it'll tell you how to download that program in case you've never done this before. I already have it loaded up here. So basically it just requires your UC Merced uh, email and password. So I'm just gonna get mine copied. And then the program itself is called Global Protect. So I'll click connect to that. And really it'll just have you log in like you usually do like with uh, Canvas or anything like that. But since I've already done it today, it just connected me automatically. So once I'm connected, then I can click on Psych Info. And of course, if you're on campus, you don't have to worry about any of that global protect stuff. And PsycInfo basically is, let me clear away all this stuff, like a Google search engine that looks for things just within the realm of psychology. So just psychology articles. Let me increase the size a little bit so it's easy for you guys to see. So let's say my topic is on how relationships may or may not make people happy, like how relationships impact happiness in a general way. Well, what I could do is I could look up a few keywords with that. I could type in relationships. And it also will give you a bunch of uh, sort of suggested topics, but I'll just stick with relationships. And if you want to add something else to it, you can use the and category. I'll say and happiness. And you can always add or remove rows as many as you like. But let's say I wanted to add a row and say, well, maybe I'm interested in happiness, but also this thing called life satisfaction. So I can do and life satisfaction, or I can do the or category. All that does is it makes it so that it finds relate, uh, something that has to do with relationships and happiness or relationships and life satisfaction. But I'll just stick to and. I'll, I'll see if there's any articles that mention all three of these concepts. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're using a phrase like life satisfaction, where it's multiple words, it's usually good to put that phrase in quotation marks so that it looks it up as a whole. It doesn't just look up life and or satisfaction, but it looks it up as a phrase. 
just like you do with Google if you're looking up a phrase in Google. So after you have some search uh, terms thrown in that have to do with your topic, I'll click search here. And it uh, looks like we have over a thousand results. So that's quite a lot. Uh, now, one way to pare that down a little bit is for this project, we only want to look at scholarly journals. We're not interested in books or dissertations. And so it can be helpful to just click right here where it says source type scholarly journals and that'll winnow it down to just what we're interested in. And then basically it lists all of these articles that have to do with the topic. It'll have the title up here. Anything that has to do with your search terms will usually be highlighted. And it has just a little snippet of the abstract, but usually not enough to be helpful. So really you'll just be looking through the titles. And actually this very first title that comes up is pretty on point for this topic. It says the relationship between life satisfaction, happiness, and current mood. That's perfect. So if the title looks promising, go ahead and click on it. And it'll take you to the whole article listing. And that's where you get to look at the abstract. The abstract is a very short sort of review of what's in the article. And if that interests you, you read through it and go, oh yeah, they conducted a couple of experiments where it looks like they were looking at undergraduate students in their relationship, happiness, life satisfaction. It's all on point. Then what I want to do is to get a copy of this article. The easiest way is to click get it at UC. This connects us with all the libraries that we've subscribed to, all the online libraries and databases, and looks to see if we, as UC Merced, subscribe to any that have this article. And it looks like we do. In fact, there's a link right here that just says download PDF. Sometimes you won't see that, but usually it'll say something like full text available. And it'll give you a few different databases to choose from. Any will work fine. But since this one just says download PDF, I'll just click on that. And it'll bring up the actual PDF for the article. There we go. So once we have the PDF, the best thing to do is to actually save a copy of it. Uh, that's because if you just try to use this link, let's say you copied and pasted this link for later or you bookmarked it, often it won't work because embedded in this link is like your login and the library access code that you might have used to get to this point. So it's always better to just download it. So I'm going to download a copy. I'll just put it on my desktop. And then once you've done that, of course, you can open up the downloaded copy and then you for sure have a copy of the article. So one thing to make sure, though, when you're looking up articles is to make sure you have what's called a primary source article. I go into this in this part of the instructions right here. So the vast majority of articles you find on SecInfo are primary source. But just to make sure what a primary source article is, is one where the researchers have conducted an original study and are then talking about that study or writing about it in the article itself, which is what most scientific articles are. But this separates it from what we might call secondary sources or review articles, where researchers take a whole body of studies that have been done by other people and then just review them in one long article. Uh, you don't want to do one of those for this project because that would just be really difficult and complicated to cover. So we're going to keep this just to primary sources for this project. One easy way to tell that it's a primary source, if I go back to this article, is primary sources usually talk about individual studies. So like this one discusses experiment one and experiment two. They usually mention like who was in the study, who was sampled. So the experiment one had 86 undergraduate students. So that all indicates that this is an article talking about a specific study that was done by the authors. Another easy way to check is if you go through and the study has method sections, like this is the method for experiment one. Then again, they're talking about the study they conducted. If it's a review article, they probably wouldn't have a method section. And you can see here they go into their participants, the procedure, and so on. So all signs point to this being a primary source article, which is what we want. But if you ever come across an article that you're just not sure about, if it's primary or secondary, shoot me an email. Uh, send me the PDF to the article itself so I can check it out and I can make sure if it's a primary source for you or not. So at this point, let's say I, as a group, we've decided what the topic is. I've gone on PsycInfo to find my article. Now all that's left to do is to read through the article and write a short research summary, one to two paragraphs that answer these questions. And these questions are pretty basic. The first one is, how does this article relate to your general topic? So if my group is interested in how relationships impact happiness, then this article is perfect because that's basically what it's talking about. 
It's related to looking at relation or uh, happiness and life satisfaction and mood among college students who are either in relationships or not and comparing the two. So what were the studies hypotheses? So in this case, it's asking what are the predictions that the researchers made before they conducted the study itself? It'll always talk about this fairly early on in the article in what we call the introduction part of the article. Usually toward the end of the introduction, before it starts talking about the individual studies, it'll say something like, we predict that, or we, here we go, we propose that, blah, blah, blah. So this is making up the prediction that they're then gonna be testing by actually collecting data. The next part was, how are these hypotheses tested? Basically, what were the methods? And here I'm not expecting an exhaustive discussion or review of the methods, but just a few sentences basically talking about who did the study sample. Uh, that's usually under the section called participants. And then what kind of materials and procedure did they run them through? And so this one's perfect. It says who the participants are, what the procedure is. And, you know, just a sentence or two about that so that I and your other group members can understand how they collected their data. And then last and kind of most important, what were the study's results? Now, if you go to the actual results section of an article, often there's a lot of dense like statistics and charts and stuff like that. You can kind of skip past that and go to more of the discussion section of the article. In fact, since this article has a few different studies at the very end, yeah, it looks like they have a general discussion section here at the end. There it is. So discussion or general discussion sections will go over the results kind of just in plain English without all the statistics. And I really don't expect you to understand or fiddle with any of the statistics as part of this project. Being able to just uh, explain the results in plain English is really what I'm looking for. So let's say you've written up your document here and you have it in a Google Doc or Microsoft Doc. Make sure to save it either as a Microsoft file or a PDF so that it's easily shareable. One thing you'll do too is at the top of your document, you'll paste in uh, just a citation for your study. Easiest way to do this is to go back to where the study is listed in PsycInfo and just click on this cite button. It'll come up, mine automatically came up as APA 7th edition, which is what you want. I think there's a bunch of different ones, but you can just go 7th edition basic. And then you can just copy this in and then you paste it at the top of your Word document. So after you've done that and you've saved your Word document uh, or your PDF, then you're gonna to wanna to post it for the rest of your group to see. Now for this assignment and also for the whole group project, we're gonna be using this free service called VoiceThread. VoiceThread is this really cool web tool that allows you to create and collaborate on presentations. And so you'll first need to create an account on VoiceThread.com. I have instructions here, but it's very simple. If you just go to VoiceThread.com, and you don't have any account, you'll just click the register button and go through the instructions there. It's a totally free account. And if you already have an account, just click sign in. You'll sign in with your email. I already have mine auto-populated. And it'll just take you to any voice threads that you've worked on in the past, which for you guys probably won't be anything. But since I'm signed on here, it's taking me, well, this is kind of previewing what we're gonna to get to, so I'll close that for now. But once you've created a VoiceThread account, then you'll want to go to our classes VoiceThread website, which I've linked uh, in the instructions. So if I click here, it'll take you to a VoiceThread channel that includes all the voice threads for the class separated by team. And you can see here team nine, 11, 14, 12, 17, and so on. It's in kind of a weird order, I'm not sure why, but they're all there. I've also posted here where it says an example article review which is my own example of what an article review could look like. So let's say we're in team 17 and you wanna add your review to that team. So I'll click through or I'll scroll through here. Here's team 17. And what you wanna do if you wanna add a document to your presentation is you wanna click on the edit button right here. So I'll click on edit. So far, this team has no slides other than just where it says team 17 on it. So I wanna add my document. So all I'll do is click the big add media button and we're gonna add something from my computer. And I've already got it written up here. I titled it example annotated biblio or whatever, because that's what I call research reviews. You can call it whatever you like. And I just saved it as a document file. So I'll click open. And basically it's gonna convert it into a VoiceThread slide. 
And so once it's do, done that, it'll take a little bit to process it. There we go. Then just click return to group. And so your slide has been added. And now if you click on the play button, you'll of course have your team number right here. And if you click over, it'll have the slide that you just inputted. Uh, this is just an example uh, where I did a different article about how relationships affect happiness. I have the citation at the top and then my review or my summary down below that. And that's about what yours should look like as well. It's also helpful if you put your name at the top, but it's not totally necessary because it always says who posts what in VoiceThread. So once you have that done, you're done for the week, at least this first week. So that is due by Friday, March 4th. And I also posted a little link to the example article review uh, that basically just takes you to what I just posted in case you want to have an example of what an article review can look like. And so the following week, uh, the week where it ends in March 11th, you'll then be reviewing the voice threads or the articles from your teammates. To do that, you'll go to your team's voice thread. You go ahead and close out of this. And then let's say, again, you're in Team 17, so then you'll go to Team 17 and you'll read through all the other people's, uh, all your other teammates' uh, review articles. So just read through their paragraphs and then add your own comment to each, each that isn't your own article, that's just something that interested you in the article or something that surprised you about the findings, sort of what was, what's your reflection or what's your reaction to this article. Now to do that, you can click the comment button and then you can do an audio comment or a video comment. I'm just gonna do an audio comment. So it'll tell you when it's gonna start recording and now it's recording and you can just say like, I found this article really interesting because, or the thing that I think is the most impactful thing about this article is blah, blah, blah. You can even actually mark it up a little bit if you want to. That's just something kind of cool that you can do while recording your response. And so once you're done, you can stop recording It'll take a little bit to upload and save it. And now it's recording and you can just say like, I found this article really interesting. There we go. And so once you have it saved, then uh, the people who wrote this article, your teammate can go back and listen to all of your reviews. They can click on it. And now it's recording and you can just say And like, then they can hear it. So it's a great way to collaborate with your team members, not just putting up slides, but being able to comment on them and share those comments. And so commenting on everyone else's slides isn't due until the following Friday, Friday, March 11th. So you have a couple of weeks to get through that last part. So just as a broader view, the steps here is you're gonna discuss with your team members uh, to find what topic you're interested in, find an article on your topic in PsycInfo, write a review of that article, and then post that research summary into the voice thread. And again, that's for this week. And since there's quite a few steps, we're not doing any lecture this week. This is all we're gonna be working on. And you have up until Friday to get that part done. And then the following week, just take some time to read through your team members' articles and then add your comments to each. And then that'll be due by Friday, March 11th. And definitely get this done before the deadline. If you don't, then obviously you'll have a score deduction on the final assignment. Score deductions will just be made on an individual basis. So if you have a teammate that didn't do their share, don't worry, you won't be downgraded for that. Uh, the whole team doesn't lose points just if one person doesn't contribute. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. I, there's quite a few steps there, but that's why I wanted to put in a video to kind of outline exactly how to do that assignment. And if you have any questions, please drop me an email or sign up for an appointment with me on Zoom for office hours or anything like that. And I hope you all uh, can uh, pick some really interesting topics. I, I really like reviewing these as we go along, and especially the final project at the end of the year, I find that I learn a lot right along with you guys.